Hey everyone, welcome back. In the last video, you learned how to get all the stores and display it on the screen, which is great. But what we want to do is also delete a particular store. So how do we delete a store? Well, we have to think about the user interface, that what we will do to delete a store. And what we want to do when we're deleting a store, we want to simply swipe from right to left so that we can see the delete button and then we can delete the store. In order to create the delete button, we're going to go ahead and replace this list with a for each. The for each is going to allow us to create a delete button much easily. So I'm going to simply go ahead and remove the list and go ahead and use for each. For each task, well, in our case, we have stores, ID, something unique about the store. You should not be using name or title, but right now that's the only thing we have. So I'm just going to use the name of the store for now. We will get access to the store, which is inside the stores array. And we can go ahead and display the actual store name. If I go ahead and run the application, it's not really going to show you anything different. I mean, we have all the stores and they get displayed. Now for each should not be used individually like this. We can actually put this inside a list so that everything looks much nicer. What for each is simply doing is running through a loop and returning you the text element. Okay, now it looks much better. Now, in order to perform a delete, when I swipe from right to left, you can see that nothing is going on. So in order to accomplish that, we are going to say on delete. And we will perform some sort of a function. Instead of coding it over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say delete store. There is no function called delete store, so we have to implement that particular function. So let's go ahead and do that private function delete store and it has to have a specific kind of a signature which means that it should take index set which is of type index set because you can actually delete multiple items. Now what we want to do is we want to iterate through this index set and get the actual index. So I'm just going to say index set dot for each and I will get an index and using the index, I can go ahead and get the store. So let store equals to stores at a particular index. Once I have the store, I can actually perform delete from the fire store database. But how do we delete it? Well, we can say db.collection. The collection name is stores dot document. But what should we pass over here? We don't really have the ID of the document. If you look at the Firestore data, this is the ID of the document that we need. Whenever you are deleting the store or you're updating a store or any entity, make sure that you are using a unique ID to perform that action. And the reason is simple. Maybe I have Sam's Club over here, but maybe I have also added Sam's Club down the road or some other store, and if I delete it just using the name, I will in the end deleting multiple records, which I don't want to do. So now the question is, well, how can we access the ID? We need to get the ID inside our store objects. Our store object currently doesn't even care about the ID. You can see that it simply says that, well, I'm just going to be storing the name and that's it. We can go ahead and add one more option over here, our property ID, which can be string. You can also use UUID, but we're gonna go with string. Okay, well, how do we get the ID? Let's go back to our content view and let's go to the function where we are fetching all the stores. 
when we're fetching the store, we get the document dot data and we convert it to store or we try to encode it or decode it to the store object. This document contains document ID. And this is the one that we can apply to store.id equals to something, making sure the store is actually var instead of let. Let's go ahead and see that what exactly is going on over here. This is saying that the generic parameter id could not be inferred. Referencing instance method id on optional requires store to conform to the view. So let's see that how we can fix this issue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check over here if the store is not equal to nil, then I can go ahead and forcefully unwrap. We know it's not nil dot id equals to doc dot document id. And then we can return the store. This means that when we get and populate all the documents, now we are also getting the store ID and we are populating it. And we need the store ID to delete a document. Now let's go back to the delete store and go ahead and type db.collection. Which collection are we talking about? We're talking about stores dot document and now we can pass in the id so store dot id now we are talking about a particular document and now we can call dot delete but make sure that you are unwrapping it now we can go ahead and call delete with a completion handler and that completion handler is going to give you access to the error so error in something if let error equals to error, meaning if the error exists, then we are simply going to go ahead and print out the error. Else, if it does not exist, then probably we want to refresh the list. So get all stores, get all stores. Perfect. Let's go ahead and try it out and see if it works. We will wait for our preview to launch. You can see that now if I swipe from right to left, I can see the delete button. Let's delete Sam's Club and Sam's Club is gone. Sam's Club is actually gone. Let's go back, try to delete Walmart and Walmart is also gone. Try to delete Fiesta and Fiesta is also gone. So we have implemented the delete feature for our Firestore Firebase application integrated with SwiftUI. If you want to support my work, then check out patreon.com slash adamsharp. You can become a patron by $5 a month or $10 a month, and you will also get access to a lot more videos, add free videos. This particular series that you're watching for the grocery app the future videos will only be available to patrons. So make sure that you sign up and become a patron. That's really going to help me out to provide you with more content and high quality videos. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the video.